I have just bought the newest car I've ever bought, a 2023 with only 4,000 miles. And when my tow truck driver picked it up from the auction, he said there is no way in the world we are unloading this car without a forklift. And when I asked him what he meant, he said that the front wheel is literally ripped off, which was unexpected because I couldn't see that in the auction pictures. But this opens up a whole new can of worms. I don't have a forklift and since I just moved to Florida, I don't know anybody with a forklift. So I went to Facebook Marketplace and found someone selling a forklift. I begged him to help me and paid him $200. Thank God he accepted my offer and was willing to help. When I got home, I went to unload the car and I started it and it sounded very odd. So I added oil to the engine and this happened. A project just turned into a possible nightmare. All right, we are finally back home and I wanted to give you guys a two second update on the E63 because a lot of you guys are saying, Tim, why don't you finish one build before you hop over to the next? So let me explain. This is the E63 and I made a massive parts list for it and I ordered like 85% of the parts. So once those start coming in, then we can start working on the vehicle. But in the meantime, we have this baby here. This is my new to me 2023 BMW M240i. So ever since the new body style 2 series came out, I honestly kind of fell in love. And I was kind of debating between the M2 or the M240 because I kind of like the look of the M240i but the performance of the M2 a little bit better. But honestly, I didn't really have much of a choice because for me, it's whatever came up on the auction first. And obviously you guys can tell that the M240 popped up on auction sooner than any M2 could. But this thing was kind of very intriguing and very interesting. So when I was playing it, I think I got it for an extremely, extremely good deal. I purchased this thing, winning bid, $19,975. I'll post a screenshot here because I was actually blown away. But you know what was interesting for me? That there was three people playing the car. Me and two other people. And both those other people that were playing it were from Ukraine. Both cities, Dnipro and Lvov. It's interesting because I'm from Ukraine and I know exactly where those places are. And with the war going on and everything, it's kind of crazy to think that people are buying cars there and potentially fixing them or parting them out. I don't know, just a random food for thought. But anyways, let's go ahead and start taking a look at this beautiful machine. Let's see the good, the bad, the ugly, and what we saw and what we didn't expect and what we are disappointed about. Going on to the interior, it literally has 4,000 miles, so it is brand new condition, so that is good for me. But just kind of right off the bat, I did not see that this airbag was blown in the pictures. And I feel like these auctions, they kind of do that on purpose. Like, they don't show you a lot of things. Like, they take a picture of the interior like this instead of taking it like this. But I'm not too mad about it because look at this. Look at this. It all ripped on the stitching which is amazing um in this bad scenario it's amazing see that because none of the actual leather is ripped so all you have to do is basically change this bag and stitch it back up um, and it should look absolutely 100 perfect so i'm not too worried about that but i did see something i've never seen in my life which is a rear seat bag being blown look at that have you guys ever seen that that is something i've never seen there's one on that side as well and it's safe. So, I don't know, that's interesting. I did see that the current airbags were blown in the picture, so I was expecting that, not too worried about that. Knee airbag is blown as well. It tucked it in here, look at that. So, it's like that and then this one is blown, the driver one. Oh, I just noticed, look at that. You got a heated steering wheel. And I like the simplicity of BMW, honestly. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I'm just kind of a BMW guy and I do really enjoy the simple simpleness of BMW. Got a little bit of texture here, pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and just hop inside. So hopping inside, you have this big screen. That's pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie, look at that. That is pretty sick. Reminds me of an E63, E63 has a similar thing. Look at this, look at that design. Pretty sick, pretty sick. And one thing that's very important for me when current airbags blow, is that the actual headliner doesn't get ripped. And you guys can see that it's not ripped, that just kind of popped out. And these creases, once I change the curtain airbag, these creases, they should go back in and you will not see anything. And luckily it's not ripped on either side. Look at that, it just popped out right there. This thing popped out. But once those, um, once we get those new bags in, we just put everything back in and all these creases will go away. 
So that's really good news as well. We don't have to change the headliner. And this color combo, the blue with the cinnamon interior is absolutely stunning. There is a tail light inside here, which is fully safe as well, but this is the only part that they gave me, which sucks because I was hoping that the bumpers would at least come here with the car and in the bumpers I would have grills and stuff like that, but it's not always the case with auctions. So we got mats, the rear is pretty much perfect. Front is pretty much perfect. This door panel is perfect. We do have some kind of scratching here. Not sure what that's from, but it's not a big deal. We'll change that tint out and make it all perfect. The thing is, I was worried about uh, this knee airbag being blown and obviously the dash. And that's one of the biggest things that made me buy this car is that this is not blown. It's just, it's not about even changing the dash. It's just kind of like finding the dash and, and changing it as well. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But anyways, as for the interior, that's kind of it. Let's go to the exterior. But before we get into the exterior of the vehicle, I want to share with you guys something that I use on literally every single car and happens to be the sponsor of today's video, Carly. I love Carly because it's a powerful little OB2-2 scanner that just fits in your pocket and supports you in any kind of situation. Whether it's a problem with your vehicle or you're buying a used car or you just want to activate some cool new features like I do. You just simply plug it into your OBD2 port just like this and it should light up showing that it is on and the rest of it is from your phone which i love because everybody has a smartphone nowadays and you don't need to carry around a whole entire tablet with you just to scan a car so once you have it connected to your obd port all you got to do is basically hop onto the app and add your vehicle i already have my vehicle added here along with many other cars that i've been using carly with uh so now let's just go ahead and connect it to the actual dongle all right it is now connected we're gonna go ahead and run a diagnostics real quickly go ahead and check for issues this stuff here is very useful for when you're buying a used car or anything like that you can just pop this sucker out of your pocket plug it into the obd port run a quick scan and possibly negotiate some price or possibly see issues that the um, owner is not telling you guys about so that's kind of a little thing you can do to make some money all right so carly finished its scan and has found nine fault codes but i'm not too worried about these issues because i'm very familiar with all of them so that's fine the distance control needs to be programmed by the dealer and uh we have an appointment for that but anyways my favorite part about carly is the coding functions you literally can unlock new features with your car each vehicle has different coding functions make sure you guys check out carly's website to see exactly what you can do with your specific car so say i take my rs7 to the track i swap out these two front seats for lighter ones because i want to go faster i put on a harness but we got one issue the seatbelt warning light is just going to be chiming as i drive but guess what with carly we have a pretty simple solution you press on coding go ahead and make sure it checks out all the compatibility for coding and you guys can see that i have that light on right there there's that pesky light we're gonna go ahead and turn off the car make sure we have ignition on though so there's ignition we see it says warning lights right here we press on the warning we read this out and we have a function here to turn off the seatbelt reminder. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it off for the time being. We're gonna turn that right back on after we are done. So boom, boom, boom. And now watch this, watch, watch, watch. It's coding, boom, that light just turned off. Just refresh that whole entire system. And look at that, coding was successful. Go ahead and fire up the vehicle. Guess what, no more light. That's it, you guys can go to the track. And obviously, make sure you guys are following all legal road laws. If you wanna run diagnostics on your own vehicle or a vehicle you're potentially buying or possibly code some awesome features into your car that it doesn't have right now, be sure to grab yourself a Carly adapter. And shout out to Carly for giving my viewers a discount code. So use Backyard Boys 23 or the link down below. And now, Let's go ahead and check out the exterior of this beautiful machine. All right, so onto the exterior we go. We're gonna go ahead and start off with the good, the bad, that's on the other side, and the ugly, which we may have a potential uh, engine crack or something. I have no idea. It's leaking oil and it's just gushing out of there. I don't even wanna think about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the good. First and obvious thing is the color. Take a look at this color. This color is absolutely stunning. The flake, the pearl, or the metallic, whatever it is in there, looks absolutely beautiful. I literally love it. The color combo with like the exterior and the interior is gonna be so darn sick. And just so you guys know, this is the first time I ever see the new Body Style 2 Series in real life. So it's kind of a double experience for me. First of all, I get to experience the car. Second of all, I get to see it for the first time in my life and see if I like it or dislike it. Does it look better or worse in real life? And I may be completely biased, but let me know in the comment section down below if you guys agree with me that the m240 looks better than the m2 and the reason why is because the m240 it's still got the hips it's still got the width maybe not as wide as the m2 but it is just like the perfect width in my opinion like look at that 
that's perfect. You know, proper fitment will make this car look absolutely aggressive. Rear quarter panel looks so good. The front end has more curves, more sharp edges on the, you know, on the front bumper and everything like that. The M2 for me personally is just a little bit too bubbly and too squarey. Although we are gonna swap out these wheels, I think these wheels look pretty darn good for like a factory OEM BMW wheel. Look at that, it looks pretty darn sharp. Another thing is this headlight. I noticed that it's all black inside and when the headlight's all black inside, it makes the front end of the car look extremely aggressive. Although the headlight is pretty simple, like it's kind of got just like one bulb right there, but it has like this floating thing inside here for the turn signal. It's, it's pretty sick, I honestly really like it. Also the hood, the hood has a lot of you know, kind of contours and body lines to it, making it look very, very aggressive. And I don't know, this car is just, it's kind of impressing me on every single corner. The door and stuff like that is pretty flat and simple. Rocker panel is a lot thicker than like a typical car. It's very big and just black. Um, but I think maybe with like a little bit of a carbon fiber lip under it is gonna make it look so, so darn sick. Mirrors are black, trim is black. So that's kind of awesome right there. The color combo, the black, the blue and the cinnamon is absolutely sick. And don't get me wrong, I love this color, but that does not mean I'm not gonna wrap the car. Like I liked this color and I wrapped it. So yeah, <laughs> in my head, I'm kind of playing the role as like a BMW designer and I'm like, hmm, what are we gonna do with the M240? Let's just not go over the top, but let's make it smooth. Let's make it wide. Let's make it sharp and aggressive. And that's exactly what this is. Like they've literally perfected what they've been doing for years. And this is what I mean. Like the quarter panel has perfect width. It looks sharp and I know that this is gonna look absolutely wild once the fitment is perfect. That's kind of what makes me excited buying cars like this and making them, you know, how I like them because I know how to bring out the width. I know how to make this look extremely beautiful. And then look at this rear shot. Like it looks so good, it's perfect. This tail light is like 3D, so it's kind of sick. Look at that, it like sticks out, sticks out over there. It's kind of part of the body line, so I like that. I am a little bit upset though that they did not give me the rear bumper because this rear bumper technically would be perfect except for that side so like there's no damage here all the grills and sensors and everything would have been perfect and then this side doesn't look like it got too much damage like this bracket is a little bit damaged and then the quarter panel but it would have been just scrapes right here and i possibly could have fixed it so it kind of sucks but if you guys do know who disassembled this car or maybe you did let me know i'll buy that bumper off you but also the front bumper as well like 85 percent of it would have been complete this side would have had some damage but uh the grills and the sensors and everything like that would have been good so uh, it's part of the auction game, so whatever. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you guys have been waiting for, which is the damage side over here. And after this, we're gonna go look under the vehicle and see what the heck is going on. So despite the fact that I won this car for what I think is extremely cheap, there's a lot of things that I did not see. And I'm not sure if this car is any longer a good deal, but you guys be the judge of that. The front end, I didn't see this. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I didn't see this and I don't know how I didn't see this. Either I was blind or I was just too excited playing this car. So we got a little bit of rebar damage, which I'm probably just gonna heat up and just push it out. Uh, this doesn't really matter, it's just the tip of it. And I would have to change it all the way back there and disassemble this entire thing just to change this rebar. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna heat this up, apply some pressure, put some hammering down here, tuk, 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 and this will come right back out and it'll be perfect. As for this cage here that holds this radiator, that holds this hole right there, <laughs> it's damaged. And I don't really know how that got damaged. This lower bar is bent as well. I'm gonna probably change this one because it's easy to change. But everything else on the front end is pretty complete, so I'm happy about that. Apron didn't get any damage. This bracket took a little bit of damage, as you guys can tell here. But I can obviously manipulate this back into its position and it should be fine. Um, the wheel here looks good and it looked good on the auction pictures, but you guys know that when I had this thing up on the forklift, the wheel was just like that. And if you look inside there, you can see that control arm just popped off right there that ripped off anyways it's gonna need a whole entire suspension assembly I'll, I'll take a look in there just in a little bit one thing i did not see though is that we potentially have some pretty juicy frame damage right here so this i didn't see this hinge could be potentially damaged in right there's the hit look at that it literally scraped the entire thing pretty crazy and up here as well like look how thin that metal is let's see i don't want to hurt myself but the reason why i say we might have some hinge damage over there is because that's definitely not correct. That gap is overlapping. It looks like whoever was driving just kind of slammed up against a guardrail and slid. And we do have a little bit of hood damage, but this hood is fully fixable. So I'm happy about that. It's an aluminum hood and it'll be fixed. We'll heat this bad boy up, crease it back into its position and it'll be. Mwah. We got some juicy damage down here on the rear end of the rocker panel. 
which I'm not too happy about because I don't I don't think that's supposed to look like that. I think this is all supposed to be pushed out and I hope that we don't need too much work down here. As for the quarter panel, the plan was to fix it and the plan is still to fix it because it's not that bad. Like yes, it's bad, but it's not horrible to a point where it's not fixable. And I would rather fix this quarter panel than have cuts and bondo and welds and seam seal and all that stuff everywhere. So I think the better alternative would be to actually fix this quarter panel. So I'm pretty happy with the damage most part. I mean, <laughs> this mirror is busted and this camera is busted but that's like literally 10% of my concerns right now. My concern is what is going on under the car. Let's go ahead and get this thing jacked up. Before we do jack it up, let me show you guys what's concerning me. So first of all, you guys can see that this motor is not sitting straight. It's sitting a little bit lopsided. You see this air box? This air box is not sitting close to where it should be mounted. There's a mount right here, should be right over here. Once we get a flashlight, and this is what's starting to really scare me. We look at that mount right there, Look at that thing, right? And it's just completely off. It is, it is, the motor is shifted off the mount. I'm, this is what's scaring me. And when I added oil to this vehicle, the oil just gushed out from underneath. And that's freaking me out because first of all, that motor is pretty expensive. It only has 4,000 miles on it. And I hope nobody ruined the motor. I know for sure I didn't ruin the motor because I didn't run it longer than like 10 or five seconds without oil. I just started up, I heard it run funny, I instantly killed it, added oil, and it started running perfect. And then I looked under the car and it was just The only thing I hope right now is that it's not like as bad as it can be. Basically, I hope out of this bad situation, I hope it's like the best outcome possible. But don't we all wish that? We always wish the best outcome for everything, but that's not always the case. So like, look at this. Look at that bolt is just ripped through the shield. This bolt is just like notched down right there. Look at that. I'm To say I'm scared is a complete under understatement. This is all in oil. It's all beat up, ripped up. Oh my gosh, I hope it's not that bad. I just took this undershield off and I found a shaving of metal. I'm literally freaking out right now. Like, you, I look calm, but this is this is really scary. This is like ten, fifteen thousand dollars, literally on the line. All right, guys, we're going in. So first thing I instantly notice is this piece of the subframe is ripped, but that mounting is fine. So we might just be able to bend this back because all it holds is a little bit of a little shield. So that's not too bad. We got a ton of oil under here. Look at that, and. Um, I'm, I'm freaked, I am freaked out. There's that control arm damage and, and tie rod and everything, look at that, so. People don't, oh gosh, I can't even, look at that stuff right there. <sighs> oh, look at that. We have something there. Look at that. Look at, is that the oil filter housing? We, what the heck? All right, we're gonna take off this right here. Oh, there's a lot of oil in there. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. We got more stuff here. I don't know what the heck it is. I think it's the motor mount. Uh, what did I get myself into? Yeah, it's definitely the motor mount. This thing is shot. But where is the oil leaking from, the oil? Well, I just took out this motor mount and it's destroyed, it's broken up here. I'm actually kind of mad right now because I was not expecting this. Look at that all around, the whole entire like housing for the motor mount was broken. Everything's broken and I still don't know where the oil is coming from. I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil, put you guys under here and see if I can find where the oil is coming from. I just got some used motor oil. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there. That's good. And set you guys up here to see if we can find anything that's leaking. Oh. I see something. I see something. Right there, it's dripping. Oh, that's the sensor. Ooh, wow. It is all in oil. Oof. 
It seems like it's leaking from somewhere here, which is, I think, good news because the motor mount is damaged right here. If you guys can see, but it's leaking from here. So this is a oil pan crack. I am so confused right now. You guys don't even understand. I'm having a feeling that the oil pan is cracked, like right here. I don't know where it's leaking right now. I need to get myself an engine hoist to pop this off because this is currently sitting on the subframe. Um, but we are still have some hope. Wow, well this thing definitely turned into a massive project all of a sudden. Oh my goodness, I just, I hope it's not bad. And as much as I hate doing this, I have to for two reasons. First of all, I don't have an engine hoist to pick up this engine right now. And second of all, I'm leaving to Washington after tomorrow to visit my parents, see how my mother is doing. She was sick for a while. So I'm gonna leave it off right here. I wanna give each and every single one of you guys that are supporting me a massive shout out. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Thank you to my sponsor for making videos like this possible. And uh, if you guys are not following me on Instagram just yet, go ahead and give me a follow there. It's BYBTim. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you guys enjoyed it. I'm a Catch you guys on the next one. We're gonna go ahead and lift this engine, take that shield off, and see is this motor toast or is it good? See you guys next time. Peace.